everybody. How's everybody doing? Good evening, Juan. Tam, good to hear from you, man. I'm keeping my video off tonight, guys. Um, CenturyLink, the entire neighborhood is down again. And uh, trying to save some bandwidth. I'm hot spotting from my iPhone 11. So if it cuts out, you know why. I've gone on my Mac and I've like shut down everything possible that I could think of that's running. Hey, Mark, Andre, Greg, good to hear from you, man. Margaret? New York, Juan. Woohoo! All right. Who wants to? Can everybody see my uh, screen over here with the chart uh, open up on TradingView? All right, great. All right, I am any mini money mo. Juan, do you want to ask me a question live where I turn your mic on? I'm tired of uh, talking to myself. That uh... <laughs> what? You're like, no, I'm good. All right, uh, Mark. What about you, Tim? Nope. Man, you guys are all hiding out. You make me talk to myself. I'm quarantined, my friend. I gotta, I gotta talk to somebody. Mark Ackerman, good. Mark Ackerman, do you want to uh, ask a question live on here? Okay. That, uh, I'll put you on here where you can talk. Ask your question here. You have to un unmute yourself. There you go. All right, Mark, I can hear you, man. What's your question? Uh, hi. I wanted to know about the risk-reward. Okay. Um, what, what would you like to know about it? I've been watching the futures about 24 hours a day, and um, there's a lot of money to be made overnight yep. in the morning. Yeah, that 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Central time is uh, – very smooth, not as yes. not, not as choppy as it is in the American session. But I just don't have it in me to get up at one thirty in the morning. Oh, well, that's okay. Uh, making money is very motivating, and being accurate is sure. extremely motivating. But yeah. it is very smooth. I'm on uh, Seattle time, so it is very smooth throughout the night, and especially. Um, when there's a trend change at night or yeah. in the morning. You yeah, well, that's like right midnight in. your time, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, actually, that's, 24 no, that's hours not a bad day. At all. I, maybe I just need to move to the West Coast. and. Uh, well, I'll change. switch with you. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very smooth after Wall Street closes in Asia up and up. It, it, it gets to be very smooth in Asia and Europe and then after Europe into the U U S open. So yep. I'm yep. wondering, I've been monitoring the futures myself. I'm wondering what type of stop loss are you using? Because what I'm trying to use is a two tick stop loss to manage any type of risk. Oh yeah. Two, two ticks is not going to keep you in any trade. Uh, I mean, unless you're just, highly accurate uh in well there. if it's the right trade it has been keeping me in i mean i'm just doing it on paper it has been yeah. keeping me in okay i just want to know what do you what, what are you trading uh what symbol 
Hold on. E yes, my yeah. pros. All right. But, uh, if you are on, let's turn on. All right, so if we have, if you, everybody that was on here from last week, if you had, weren't on here, I've got balls from 5K Club, his support and resistance zones. That's what these blue lines are. I have them set up in uh, trading view on this side over here. I put them in a, a box so I could turn them easily on and off. And that's what, these are so let's um, let's take a look at this if we were going to isolate we want to go today's the 22nd it's only 21 we're going to go from the low we're going to take one of these lows right here and if you look right here on the bar count number, it's right here on the left. I want to hover underneath that lowest candle, and it is bar 9706. So you go up to Elliott Wave, click your sprocket, 9706. Click OK. It takes it normally takes five to seven seconds for it to update. It wasn't too bad considering I'm, I'll say I'm on a hot spot, so. It'll be interesting. All right, so here, here was a smaller fifth wave move that did not hit today. And here is one right here that took off and did really well. So let's measure this one. I'm going to measure this one that didn't work. I'm going to mute you off, Mark. Uh, okay, sure. Thanks. Just, just so. You're welcome. Okay, so on this, on this fourth wave, we, you've seen where I isolated down over here. It's now painted the one, the two, the three. Once it paints the number four, which originally it did right here, and then it pulled back up and then came back down and we did a deeper four. But let's just assume that we were right here on this one. You're gonna draw your regression channel and I've got one set for wave four pullback. Put it at the high of that three to the low of the four. And come on. Let me try this again. The four pullback, high of the three, low of the four. There we go. All right, so after you draw this, you're looking at, you want to be outside of that channel going out of it. Now you also want to be, this blue and red line is your 6.4 moving average. You want to be above that 6.4 moving average before you go. We also want to measure the Fibonacci on here. Let's go in here, we're gonna do a fib retracement. And I have it set in here as the 9140. And I'm gonna, I'll go over it again, how to change it to those numbers. So here's your wave four, you're gonna go to zero. And then up to the high, which is right here of wave three, you're gonna drop that down. And make sure I drop that perfect, okay. We did not violate the 140, so there's one reason to go long. Now, right here, you did get a green arrow or a green dot on your bias for the higher time frames to go long. So this was an entry on this one right here at 27.65. It took off and went all the way up to 27.73. 27, yeah, 2765 to 
pull back down in, into here, painted a new wave four. So let's draw another, another channel. All right, now if you notice how much bigger that channel is on that one, because we had some movement around in there, now your new entry is going to be above the 6-4 moving average, which we were. Your cyan crossed over the yellow for bits. You came out of that channel. The next candle opened, retested it, and came back up. And that's going to be your entry at the top of your line here. Now, some people, uh, you may want to look left and go above there. Uh, I don't think there's enough risk to reward in that. To take that one and let's just draw that real quick for your risk to reward. Here we go from right, right about there was where it's at. So your 1.6 is up in there. On paper, for all the rules, you would not want to take this uh, move. Now, was there money in there to be made? Yes. Um, now you gotta take your fib on your 9140, move it back over here because we had a deeper fourth wave. Still didn't violate it though. Um, it came out good. You had a green dot to go long, but your risk to reward was not 1.6, it was way up here. And we didn't get that high either. So uh, I, that wouldn't have been one that you wanted to take. So we'll rule that one out. Uh, I mean, yeah, some uh, wicks are unfilled orders. I mean, there people are looking for orders in that area and then they don't get filled, so it turns into a wick. All right, so let's go back to this one. I'm not, uh, I'm not even gonna analyze on that one. And guys, on this, let's do this right here. On your Fibonacci for your 9140, here are your settings. You can screenshot that if you, have, most of you guys that are on this are on this weekly. Uh, so you already have this, but for those of you that don't, there's your coordinates compared to a normal. I like the, you change the colors to green and red, keep your zero, and then you want to save it down here, save as, and then you save it as your W5T9140. I save mine in gray just because I don't use that on any other channel, so I know what that is down the road. Now, our roller coaster software on here. Let's just let's turn off Elliott Wave and bits. I'm going to take off these channels because we know they don't. We don't need them. You want to go back of looking into the groove. Now, roller coaster popped off a an entry down in here, but why would you not take this? Because this support and resistance zone is right here. And look how accurate that support and resistance zone was. Yeah, did it bust out of there? And uh, but it was too risky. Look how many times it came back out. Don't want to get into that. This. Paul talks about getting into the groove on roller coaster, and you want to go backwards looking at how accurate has it been for a little while on each time frame. Five minute time frame, this was a good one. Nah, not uh, yay, nay. This was a, a really good one. This was a badass one right here. Uh, I like these like this that are one, literally one candle that you get the entry line for here, it pops off and took off from 2824 to 2860. 
Yeah, that, that's a nice, nice, clean move. That had to be, yeah, 8.30. 8.30 of because it dropped down and then took back off. Same way with this one here. Um, you would have went 43. You went six uh, points, negative, uh, depending on what your stop loss is. Uh, this is the recommended one, but you go by whatever your account, uh, your account balance and stop loss rules. Typically it's 1% of whatever your account balance is, uh, but it is specific to you and your risk tolerance and how much money you got in there. But it took off and went very, very well. 28.43 all the way down to 28.10. Um, that's 130 some ticks out of there so five minutes hasn't been bad it's had some good uh, some really good ones on there but i don't know if i like them as that much so let's go down to four i'm gonna delete this all right four minutes to me is looking a lot better still have the same one down here uh, i'm sure all of them will This one was a good one that took off out of here. That one was a really good one. Let me take this one off. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Good, good, good. And this is how you grade. You just go back and just look how many of them worked out and you know that it's in the groove on there. This was a no-brainer on getting out. It took off and went straight up almost to the tick, to the top of that support resistance zone. Same way coming back out, when this thing came down, it went almost to the support resistance zone. This one blew clear through it. So four minutes would be a good one. Three minutes. Sorry guys, my computer or the internet is loading really, really slow since I'm on the hotspot. All right, so on a three minute, it's saying there could be a possible long up here at 2783 ish, somewhere right in there. Who knows? We'll see. But three minutes have been pretty good. Nice. I like the big long roller coaster moves where it has the stop printed. These short ones like this, you would have never gotten in those short ones like that. Uh, this one gave you a signal to go short, but it never, never hit on it. This one, obviously, you wouldn't take because you're in a support and resistance zone. Now, this one here, I wouldn't have taken that one because you're going into support and resistance zone. It still, still did very well, both of these, going down um, and going up. Margaret... Um, let me show you on trading view, just the way that the coding is, they do not have the ability to put the little hash marks right here. Let me, I don't know if I can do a hash mark. Nah, well, I don't think it'll let me do one. Let me just put it, just put like a little arrow right here. This arrow, Let's turn it red so it's easy to see. This little, normally on TradeStation or Thinkorswim, and I believe Ninja, they would have hash marks that you basically just drag your stop loss down. Your stop loss, there is a, uh, a red colored line in here. You can barely see it uh, on trading you. Basically, you just use this line right here as your trailing stop. So you just keep moving it down and it didn't stop you out until clear down to here is where it would have stopped you out on this candle, which was 27.93 and it got you in up here at 28.19. So not, not a bad move. I mean, it dropped way, way down here, 27.72. But if you just you followed the recommended stop loss on there after it got active and going, that's where that's where you would put it. All right, when you enter this uh, the trade market, it's this green line right here. 
And let me zoom, let me go over here. All right, see how this is what you'll get first. First, you'll get just a green line and then another like ha green hash line. That is your entry for a breakout going up. It may hit, it may not hit, you don't know yet. Once it actually does and takes off, your recommended stop loss is the bottom of that orange box. So obviously depending on your um, risk tolerance is whether or not you can afford to have a stop loss that big. Rarely do they get stopped out once they activate and they go, this one did, uh, but you would have gotten out as soon as it got back to there. I personally, when they, if I take one at the entry line and it takes off like this one right here, I don't take the entry until the second time. A lot of times it comes through and touches and then comes back up. And if you look down here, your bias is yellow. So it does, it's not giving me a red, I'm looking for a red to go short. There's no reds down here. So I wouldn't have taken that um, on it, but on the second one out, you would take it. But I immediately put my stop loss, as soon as it takes off, I put my stop loss, you know, one tick, two ticks uh, below it, just in case if it comes back, which that one did. Now, this one didn't, it had one bar and it took off like a rocket and did, you know, never turned around. Yeah, exactly, Margaret. Uh, then you go on a micro. And that's one of the things uh, with the micro at $1.25, um, a tick instead of $12.50, you can do a, a, a pretty uh, decent size uh, stop loss and keep yourself in a trade. If it, if it doesn't pan out, you're not out, you know what I mean? It's not hitting you uh, for $1,250. It's hitting you for maybe $125. But if it takes off and runs like a rocket, Twenty-seven, sixty-eight. Where are we up there? Twenty-seven, sixty-eight, seventy-eight, fifteen. That's sixty ticks on that move there. Now this one never went. Even uh, well, that one never even went negative. Same way with this one. I mean, they went to four ticks, five ticks negative on this one once it activated and took off. This one never went negative. I mean, once it took off, it took off. And that's what getting into the groove of going backwards. Well, now one thing that's very important is having those 5K club levels put in there. Margaret, I'm saying on these entries, um, like this one, this one right here, okay? It takes off, typically it, goes out one and pulls back and then comes out again. Usually when it comes out again, that's when I'll enter is the second time. So entering right here, it takes off and goes, I'm going to put my stop loss right at the entry, maybe one tick profit um, just so it covers the fees. And that way, if it comes back and goes negative, um, I'm trying to find a good one. Um, if it ends up, if it ended up going negative on you, you're not losing anything. Now this one would have came back and stopped you out and then took off like a rocket uh, on there. But your, your recommended stop loss on that one is down here, 2749 from 2761. So you're talking about 12.48 tick, um, stop loss if your, your account can do it. That's why jumping down to micros is the best idea on that one. Keep your risk lower. We got... All right, what other questions do you guys have for me tonight? Yes, I mean, like, 
I mean, for instance, oil, which can't trade it right now, uh, you know, oil Wednesday at, what is it, 9.30, uh, you don't, yeah, you, uh, well, you know, you don't just don't trade at 9.30, the same way with the jobs reports and stuff like that. Rob, what do you got here? Can you just show just roller coaster and bits together without Elliott Wave? Um, how long ago did you put that on there? Yes, that's all this is right here is just roller coaster. And then let me turn on bits. There you go. So if you guys familiar with bits, when your, your cyan line crosses over your yellow, which is this cyan line right here going in and out of these bars, when it crosses over, that is your signal to go short. Well, this is kind of a no brainer that you're coming out of a support and resistance zone that you've been in for you know, an hour, you've got about 25, 30 candles inside this support and resistance zone. And then we busted out of it. I'm, um, that's going to, that would be a good entry coming out of there. And then, then roller coaster picked it up after that and kept on going, moving it down. We'll be, let's, uh, I'm hoping while we're here, let's see if this uh, roller coaster ends up picking up this move up here. This will be a good one uh, to watch live. Uh, Mark, you've got your, um, your bias dots down here, which are the higher time frames, telling you what's going on uh, in there. Now, Anybody that knows me knows that I like my channels. So if, let me see. All right, I'm gonna go, kind of got two channels here. Now I have my channel saved as favorites for different colors. You can see them over here. Yellow is what I use for a one hour and we're on a one hour. So I'm gonna snap one from the pivot point down here to where we are right now. And we zoom in this and kind of see where we're at on that current session. If you look, roller coaster picked up that move off that center channel and ran it all the way up into there. Now on the flip side, let's go over here. We've got a nice channel from up here to down here. So let's draw another one. Uh, we got a higher, high, higher low. I kind of hate to go clear over here, but that is the Uh, I don't like that one. Let's try it again. I'm going to go from here. Oh, that's still going to move it over there. Okay, so this is one of the things that I like about using channels. Because this is also kind of a no-brainer when we had a downtrend for quite a few hours, I mean days, and then we're in an uptrend going up. We came down and bounced off our support and resistance zone. It came back up. It retested the center line of that down trend, which for me is a, a reason to go long, which it did. It went all the way up to the uh, center channel line, then back down to the almost the bottom of that channel line, back up again, tested that channel line again, twice, almost three times. And then the third, this third one right here, we opened basically right on the channel line, came down and came back and for it to take off. Now, bits 
gave you a signal right here, cyan crossed over yellow. Now let, let me turn off roller coaster so you can see this better. Your bits, your cyan crossed over right here, crossed over the yellow. Being a center channel line from the previous downtrend, and then now we're in an uptrend, there's your signal to go long right there. Now we're coming back down. I don't know if we'll cross over or if that blue, the center or uh, cyan is going to go sideways with that yellow and then back up in here. This support resistance zone, look how strong it was. It resisted it again. Uh, and it, you know, we played for several hours in there. We couldn't get past it. So I don't know that uh, may come up, may come back down. I don't really know on this one. Uh, Mark, you can use them individually. Yeah, Mark Ackerman uh, also uh, forecasting a time frame. Yeah, I, I like going to the, the hour. Now, if you drop back down to say the five minutes, on uh, you got to zoom out on um, trading view. Now, let me see if it'll – it's going to take a second here for it to pick up those channels. because of my hotspot. There we go. So on a five minute time frame. So now you're on a five minute time frame, but you know what your higher time frame 60 minute channel is looking at. For instance, today with this thing reaching out all the way up here, it pierced through the support and resistance zone, went straight out of it and then came back. For me, that would have been a short entry uh, right there. I didn't trade today, guys, just so you know. Uh, let's see, I took today off, which that nice big long wick was uh, coming out of the support zone or back into it, uh, res resistance, and back in again, and we popped through, and there's your cyan line crossed over coming out of it. So it doesn't matter which time frame you go on, the rule is the same. Now let's click on roller coaster and see what it picks up off of it. Yes, those are Paul's moving averages. The the red and the blue lines on the Elliott wave are the 6-4 moving averages. Now this one coming out of here on the five minutes, 2782, 2773. I personally wouldn't have taken this uh, roller coaster move out of here. Now, it did give you a red dot right here to come out. Uh, stochastics uh, weren't complete, it didn't go oversold until down here. Uh, but I mean, that, I just wouldn't have taken it because I don't like taking stuff to the bottom of the channel because this is the thing. If you look at this channel, this has been in this channel since yesterday at 10.15. Is that right? Yeah, 10.15 in the morning till right now. So it's been pretty accurate. Now, are we going to change and go back down here and start writing this channel down i don't know you know what i mean uh, it's too risky for me i wouldn't uh wouldn't take one and let me see if the stop loss is yeah the stop loss has been hit on this one it wicked out and stopped it out right there on that candle so let's go to a different let's look at something else um contracts let's go to rty i haven't looked at it On your five minutes, that's had some. It's had some decent five-minute moves. They're on here, so let's go to one hour. And I'm going to turn off everything that's on there. And we're going from about. This point right here to here, I'm going to draw a channel there, which it remembers the last one you 
Drew, which was 60 minutes. So I'm going to go from there to there. You only got to snap it halfway close and it does the closing of the bars. It knows it from your settings. And then I do mine on high, low, close divided by three, except for the regression channel for the fourth wave pullback that you measure it. And I use close for it. It makes it a little bit wider channel, makes it a safer entry, I think. Um, so on this higher time frame on RTY, it is we're not at the bottom of the channel. So let's go down to five minutes. Zoom back. And I apologize, guys, for my hot spot, but hey, at least I didn't leave you hanging and didn't do a webinar at all. Come on, internet. I don't know if it, that channel is going to show up or not. Let's go back to one hour and see if it'll pop it on there. And put it on there. Now you could theoret theoretically do another channel on this one to here. And that one, that one's been pretty accurate as well on this down, going down right now. And I can, there's no guarantee of where it's going to go, but if it does follow the channel lines like this, if we got down into this area right here, 1158, that's, you know what I mean? It's like this channel has been pretty accurate for a while. That 1158 area is going to be a good entry spot. Um, same way with here, same way with here, especially right here, uh, where if this channel ends, it goes back up. Now add on, the roller coaster. Yes, I'll put in spy mark. Give me just a second here. Do I have SPY in here? I think I do. Yes. All right. We have one on one hour. Let's go to daily. Yeah, pretty gappy right in there. Let's go to four hours. 240. All right, we're going to go for the hour. All right, the hour time frame uh, looking pretty darn good on roller coaster. And you opened up. It gapped down lower, popped up, and then down. Pretty choppy. This one was a decent one up, and this was a massive move. Uh, right up here, it gapped up and then took off. There, now how I would handle that chart is I would turn off roller coaster. I'm gonna do, because you have each session is, basically like separate. You can see how it, uh, the gaps on there. Uh, I kind of hate to draw a channel from there to there, but I'm going to do it anyway. So we're on a one hour from this move to this move. Gives you kind of uh, almost the same thing that was on the ES that uh, if you guys look at that, 
pretty darn, we're bouncing around in there. Now I like to do one whole thing together. So we could do here to here. And that's been pretty accurate. The center line has been super accurate. The bottom has been accurate. The top, eh, close. And then you can then turn on roller coaster and see where you're at. Roller coaster picked up this move going down. It actually picked it up on at 7 a.m. Yeah, 7 a.m. It picked up this move. Now it didn't activate because you came out came down yep 7 a.m that uh and 17 and then boom six o'clock drop down but you could take that on a five minute time frame as well and i apologize guys with the uh, that hot spot i Trading view is always lightning fast. That running it off a hotspot plus zoom on here is really taxing the, uh, I don't know what the max is that it puts out on my cell phone. There we go, there's a channel. All right, this is good. We've got a couple on the five minute so compared to that 60 minute, there wasn't a bunch of opportunities necessarily in there. And here's one off the center channel line. That would have been a, a very nice entry. Right off there. And there's exactly where I told you where it comes out a little bit, usually retest it and it pulled all the way back in, didn't stop you out and then came out. And when it came out, it took off. And that's a good 283 to 287. Same way on this one, came out, pulled back, and then rocketed down. Now, add on your bits. And then you have moves in here that are within those channel lines where it's cyan crossed over your yellow. You can see here it came and retested it right there in that corner. Then took off, retested again, came back up, retested, just kept going and going. Now it's crossed over here, came up, retested it, and back down. And you have a roller coaster entry for down. And if you look right here where the current price is, that red dot of line, there's a green line right there. That is a bits short entry line. And there's your first, second, third, and fourth target. Uh, Mark, I mean, it just depends on the, the, uh, the day. You know what I mean? It's like some days are choppy as hell. You know what I mean? And you're just trying to catch 12 ticks. Uh, other days, you know what I mean, are rangey bound, so you're trying to pull 20 points. You know, uh, you just gotta kind of got to adapt to the day to where it was at. And I don't even have Elliott Wave even on, on here, or turned on on this, which this looks like to me a possible fifth wave move back up if it does and then probably no nah, no it won't i don't think we're not going to come out of that nope there's a, a one and a two so three would bring us way down here somewhere down in this area so yeah i don't see i wouldn't mess with this right now um my entry would have been up here by that center channel on. You're welcome, Mark. Guys, what other questions do you have? I can pull up some other stuff. Let me show you 
a little bit of you guys that follow me on Twitter. This is All right, so if you look at AKAM uh, on, and I have no idea what the hell that is, uh, but AKAM on March 25th said go long at 94.87. That guys, that's our smart list scanner uh, for stocks that trade over ten dollars uh, a share. And at least 500,000 shares a day are traded so that you have good liquidity of getting out of there. But, it, and that, what did I say? Day, did I say that it was? Let's see. That is March 25th. So if we go over here, 25 was right over here. Now that's when it gave the signal. It never, it didn't hit to actually take it until April 3rd. So April 3rd at 90, well, actually 94.87 is what the entry price uh, was set at. I wouldn't have taken it until it was into this area right in here of that 95, we'll just say 95, 95.01. It went not quite $2 negative, $1.40 negative uh, on this candle right here. Now it did, Take off 94.87. It did go up to 99.48. So what is that? Three and a half, four dollars. Guys, a, a thousand shares would only take 90, 9,800 bucks. Uh, you have no margin because you paid cash for it, and you pull four dollars in a few days. It's four thousand bucks. That turn around and dump it. Uh, that's one of the things that I've been thinking about of going to swing trading stocks is how much uh, effort do you think it's going to take me on a day? If I, I got a daily channel that we've been in since January 2nd of 2019. So over a year, pretty much we have respected this channel other than, the big old drop, uh, you know, that the whole market dropped, but we're back into that same channel again. We've respected it completely up here. We touched uh, the current trend channel and the long-term 13 month or 14, 15 month channel. We touched it to the tick and have pulled back and I would almost, that almost looks like a third, uh, one, two, three. Let's isolate off this candle down here. 51.26, oops, wrong button, 51.26. Usually it takes five or seven seconds for it to pop up. Yep, see, look, I can spot an Elliott wave without even having it on. Uh, I like, I actually like that. Um, I like that a lot. Uh, to the tick for the third wave, pull them back down here for the four. And lo and behold, look, look where in the green is this channel, the bottom of the channel. What typically happens when we hit the bottom of the channel goes back up and your six, four moving average is right there. And if you could barely see in here, all my colors I got in here, these are the purple point of control dots. So if we come down into here, even if we got all the way down to the yellow, uh, yeah, I, I like this. That, uh, and even if we went clear to the bottom of the regular channel, that's not a bad, uh, now the only thing is one, no, one's down here. So we're good to go. Uh, keep your eye on that, A-K-A-M-A-I. I'm going to keep this on my chart so next week we can go over it again uh, where I'm not just showing you new stuff, you know what I mean? We can go over what we saw last week and then what we'll see next week. Uh, so, all right, guys. Uh, he has talked about putting ETFs in there. Um, 
I'm not real familiar with them, so I couldn't tell you if one of these symbols was or wasn't an ETF. Um, I have to check it out. That uh, I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of my friends trade ETFs, um, you know, that are buying big stuff. You're welcome, Mark. Do you exit after the first target? Um, are you talking about on bits, Julia? You're welcome, Mark. Julia, if you're talking about uh, on bits where it gives you a two, one. your entry is down over here and then you have a one or a one two three and fourth target it's kind of up to you i mean it's um where do you want to be yes uh on if you go to trade the fifth dot com let's see here let me drag this over here i'm going to turn off some of these things so that yeah they have like amazon on there amazon let me show you um and that is free on these on here now it does uh sometimes rotate around Look at Amazon. This one, uh, I forgot about that. I was checking this one out earlier. This Amazon one has been really, really good on these targets that roller coasters picking off. This one here was 324. Set to go long, probably I wouldn't have taken that one because like I said, it always comes out and it makes like a little, like a little wedge, pulls back in and then comes back out. Uh, now, if you took it from a bits entry, which is this cyan line from the Elliott wave, there's your six, four moving average. You were above it. Cyan crossed over, you're above your point of control dots. Um, technically, that would have been an entry, and you never would have went negative more than about one point, not even that, maybe four ticks, even after it pulled up and back down and then took back off. Um, but Amazon, let's say, got up there to 2461, but look at where it had you get in at 1956. Um, I mean, you're only talking a month month's time frame um i thought for sure we were going to come back down and tag this but we haven't yet uh and this could go on to make a grab this here this could go on to make a higher three and then um this box could move up higher uh for a fifth wave move it recalculates it daily on um, that other Smart list calculates it every night at like 11.30 p.m. and puts that out. So you could set your trades up if you want, or at least know what's up and what's going on um, the night before. So yeah, but there, there's another one, uh, you know, I mean, 400 and some dollars a share. Now that's an expensive, uh, if you had to pay for that, that's, that's pretty expensive out of there. But even then, if you tied up 19 grand, uh, for 10 contracts, you know, less than a month, you've made $4,000 on them. That's not a bad, not a bad deal. And Amazon's not going out of business, especially right now. It's not trading advice of whether or not Amazon will go out of business, but I'm pretty darn sure I don't think they are. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. It is 7.56, unless you all got something else. Julia MJW, I'm uh, for um, these sessions. I use Paul's uh, Trade the Fifth uh, Zoom so that it records it and it puts it into our YouTube thing and the whole nine yards so everybody can find it. Uh, mine's not linked to that where I do private ones.
You're welcome, Greg. And, uh, Andres, thank you for coming, man. I thank you guys uh, all for coming tonight and hanging out. Um, and I, like I said, I apologize for my internet being so slow, but the hotspot I don't think did too bad for Zoom running, uh, you know, all these different things that open. I, I thought it did pretty decent. You're welcome, Margaret. Uh, Robert, I don't, I'm going to honestly, let me look on here real quick that we're kind of going to phase out the Thursday one. Uh, to me, it was kind of redundant to have them, uh, back to back. They like truly were just, uh, kind of just rehashing the same thing. Now there is one tomorrow. Paul's, uh, Paul will be doing that one tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We, I was going to say, we may be phasing out that Thursday one. Like I said, it's kind of uh, redundant of doing them both back-to-back -back, uh, on there. But as of right now, Paul's going to still keep doing them. No date for tomorrow? Let me see. I just registered and it, it took mine and said that it was on there. Try it again uh, when you go underneath there. Let me let's do this. I'm going to put this in here for everybody. Oh, hey, one thing I forgot to tell everybody. Uh, Paul has got a new, he uh, just relaunched it. It is mytradingbuddy.com. It is a new social media platform for uh, traders. I have not personally been on it yet. Like he just sent it out today. Uh, tomorrow I will get registered and be on there, but check it out. Um, and don't forget guys also that we have the, um, I actually forgot that we have our training event this weekend that was supposed to be in New York. Uh, we have the two for one. It's typically 1500 for that live two day event. You will get the live two day event. Um, when we, uh, as soon as they get rid of all the flying restrictions and Paul can get out of Spain and get to the United States, we're going to host a live online event this Saturday and Sunday that's included in it. And you get the live event later on down the road too. Uh, which hopefully shouldn't be more than a couple months. Uh, they get all this traveling stuff lined out. Perfect, Robert. All right, man. Hey, thanks for letting me know that. I may, uh, I'll let our guy know that sends that out that the link didn't work. But all right, guys, y'all have a good night. I appreciate everything. Uh, don't work too hard. See you next week. Talk to you later.